Welcome into the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast. It is Thursday, September 1st. I am Blair Angulo. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. A big week one of college football games and possibly none bigger than Notre Dame, Ohio State, two schools that right now are jostling for a top five recruiting class in the 2023 recruiting cycle. The Buckeyes get a big chance to make a major statement from a recruiting standpoint. We've got the D Dean of Recruiting at Ohio State for Bucknuts.com, the Ohio State side on the 24-7 Sports Network. Bill Kerlick joining us. Bill, how are you doing? Doing well. My pleasure. Uh, always glad to join you, Blair. Always a pleasure to have you on, Bill. We were just joking before we hit record on this video that the season kind of creeps up on you, right? We we get after it in the offseason with the seven on sevens, the showcases, the camps, uh, all, all, the, all those things. Then in the summer, there's official visits and there's a lot of different recruiting events. But then the season gets here. Uh, and now, not only does it get here, but it gets here in a big, big way with Ohio State kicking off against Notre Dame. When you think of the potential recruiting implications and the potential impact that a game like this has on a program, uh, what do you see? What is your outlook on the importance of this weekend? Well, I think to kind of put it into perspective, um, I've been doing this 35 years and I always hate to say, you know, something is the best, the very best, because, you know, 35 years is a long time. It means I'm getting old. But, uh, uh, and I've been asked a few times in the past couple of weeks, is this the best group of recruits that you've ever seen assembled at Ohio State at one time for a game or a weekend? And, you know, I, again, I hate to say best ever, but I will at least say, that it is one of the best, if not the best ever group of recruits. Um, you know, may, maybe there aren't quite as many of the top uh, guys that Ohio State is recruiting for their 2023 class, the current class, as maybe at some other points in history. But that's because the ones that are visiting, and there's a lot of them, most of them have already committed to Ohio State. They're, they're mostly done for 2023. So, you know, they're not going to bring in a boatload of 2023 kids that they still want because there aren't that many slots open. But the big thing for them is that they really have three premier guys that they want to finish the 2023 class off with. And all three are going to be in Ohio Stadium for that Notre Dame game. And when you look at it, uh, they're coming from distance. One of them from out your way. Uh, West Coast, uh, Mateo and Galea, uh, five-star defensive end. Then you got from Florida, Keon Keeley, uh, just an elite defensive end, five-star. And Damon Wilson, who's who's tremendous as well. Those are their three main focus guys to finish this class off, and they'll all be in Ohio Stadium on Saturday. Yeah, Bill, it's very clear, right, that Ohio State has some major priorities still along the defensive line. Number six class right now nationally in the 2023 rankings as we approach the opening week of, of the college football season. And I don't know if it's strategic, but I also don't want to say it's not strategic to have these three guys on campus at the same time to take in a game of this magnitude. Yeah, I think um, I think it's strategic in that they want them there. There's not going to be a better atmosphere at Ohio State as long as the Buckeyes play well, which I think they will. And uh, it's an exciting game, and and they win. Of course, that would help the excitement level. I mean, it's going to be off the charts, and they want them strategically all there for that. And the other thing is at Ohio State, as you know, you know it's the same way at Alabama, or whatever. If you don't want to compete, that's not the place for you because there's going to be great players at Ohio State. There's going to be great players at Alabama or Georgia or, you know, the schools like that. So you've got to want to compete. So having those other guys there, they know that they're going to compete if they end up at Ohio State. And, and realistically, is Ohio State going to land all three of those guys? You know, no, that's, that's not going to happen realistically. But if they can land one of the three, that's a home run. If they can somehow pull out two of those three, it is an absolute grand slam. 
I love the baseball analogies. Yeah. You know, I'm a baseball guy, Bill. I appreciate yeah. that. You know, it's, I think it's hey, they'd be hitting 667. So that'd be pretty that'd be pretty remarkable <laughs> if they were able to get two of the three. Um, let's start with the two from Florida. Keon Keeley, Damon Wilson, two five star edge rushers. Uh, Keon Keeley, interestingly enough, backed off a commitment to Notre Dame earlier this summer and had been in a way kind of angling this way for a while, right? Uh, Alabama has a lot of the buzz, but it does seem like Ohio State has its chance this weekend with Keon Keeley. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, Blair, it's interesting in that, you know, you're Marcus Freeman and you have had a commit from, from Keon Keeley for months and months. He's been in your class and then all of a sudden, you come to your first game and he's standing on the sideline for an official visit to the team you're playing. You know, how ironic is that? You know, as you mentioned, we all kind of came, saw it coming, but still, if you're Marcus Freeman, that's, you know, maybe a little hard to stomach, I guess is, is what I'm saying. But, you know, I, I think it's realistic that he ends up at Ohio state, but I do agree that right now the momentum is with Alabama. And if I was going, I do a feature called, if I was going to predict right now, that is where I would predict for Keon Keeley. But, you know, high state does a great job on official visits. So let's see how things are after the official visit. Yeah. Just one of the really good features that you can catch over at bucknuts.com, the Ohio state site on the 24 seven sports network. What is your gut feeling? What is the latest on, on their pursuit of Damon Wilson? Well, they've long been pursuing him. And, and you know, back uh, last spring, uh, talking to Damon, he always brought up Ohio State. And he knew back then Ohio State was going to be one of his official visits. He would always tell me, I'm going to make an official visit there. I don't know when yet. It's not set yet. He said, I'll probably wait till the fall to take official visits. But one of them will be at Ohio State. So, you know, if he knew that far out in advance, one visit was definite, and that was Ohio State. You know, that always told me that, this guy is really seriously interested in Ohio State. He's impressed with Larry Johnson and the job he's done of getting guys to the league and Chase Young and all that. So, you know, Ohio State is a very realistic contender to get him out of Florida. And that said, it's not going to be easy, but they have a realistic shot. Yeah, Damon Wilson, Keon Keeley will be taking their official visits this weekend. Mateo Uyangalele already took his official visit to Ohio State this past June. But I'm assuming, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the Buckeyes will make this weekend feel just as just as exclusive as an official visit for a player of his caliber. And I'm sure they're going to be able to, you know, maybe find a way to seat those guys all together at, at, at lunch or at dinner or, you know, at the stadium. And, and I think it's really remarkable. Like you mentioned that Mateo is going back there after, you know, his official visit to make sure that for him to go out to see, see a game day atmosphere to see this game in particular, I think it indicates really, really strong interest of, of him potentially leaving the West Coast. Yeah, and not only that, Blair, but um, this isn't just his second time back after the official visit. He was out here uh, during the summer of his junior, before his junior year, he was out here a summer ago uh, making an unofficial visit and camping at Ohio State. So, you know, this isn't just the first return trip. Um, this is another trip for him. Uh, which again, you know, you're not going to pay your own dime, pay your own way from California to Ohio twice plus an official visit if there's not a legitimate interest. I think, you know, I really think there's three schools right there for him. I think the USC, Oregon, Ohio State, and I think it's very much wide open. I guess to be honest, I think Ohio State is in good a shot or better shot than anybody at landing him. Yeah, four-star defensive back Cedric Hawkins, who's already committed to Ohio State, also expected to take his official visit to Ohio State this weekend. We're going to continue to look at some of the expected visitors that will be in Columbus for the big Notre Dame-Ohio State matchup. Right after the break, you are listening to the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast. We're back on the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast. Blair Angulo joined by Bill Kerlick, the Dean of Recruiting at Ohio State. He covers everything Buckeyes for Bucknuts.com, the Ohio State site on the 24-7 Sports Network. And Bill, you mentioned home runs. You mentioned Grand Slams. Uh, they've already got a, a triple of sorts uh, of commitments, high-caliber ones at that, 
that will be on campus to potentially start to sway some other recruits to join them in this class. I'm talking Brandon Innes, Noah Rogers, the premier 2024 prospect, Dylan Rayola, is also expected to make it out to the horseshoe. Uh, when you discuss some of these players, when you think about their impact of potentially helping this class build, um, you know, what do you see? What what kind of impact do you think that could have? That could have. Well, you know, you you being out there uh, on the West Coast and and all, and not too far from Arizona, you you know as well as anybody or better than anybody uh, the goings on with Dylan Rayola. And as you know, he's he's going to play in a game on Friday night in San Diego. That, and, by the way, by the way, yours truly will be there. Uh, right. In San Diego against Cathedral Catholic Friday, which would be what about ten Eastern is kickoff ten thirty mm -hmm. Eastern. So yep. not only is he going to be playing a high school game, and then you know probably hopping on a flight out of San Diego Airport uh, early on Saturday to to make it to Columbus. So it's going to be a really interesting weekend for Dylan Rayola. Yeah, he is. It's exact. That's exactly right. He's he's hopping on a plane very early Saturday morning. Uh, he'll get the game against Notre Dame is a 730 kickoff. So he'll get there uh, afternoon on Saturday and then he's going to stay till Sunday night. So he's going to uh, be at Ohio State for over 24 hours and he's going to do a lot of recruiting. Uh, that's one of his, you know, he wants to see a great game. Obviously he wants to see the Buckeyes play in person and all that and experience everything he's going to experience on Saturday. But he also, you know, it's kind of a business trip a little bit for him. He's he's going to be recruiting, and he does a great job of it. I think it's really interesting because when you look at it on the surface, to get the number one player in the 2024 class and, and for him to commit earlier this year, you look at it on the surface and say, okay, Ohio State's getting a terrific player, right? That, that could be the horse of their future quarterback stable. That could be the guy that leads, you know, the Heisman conversation that potentially leads them to a college football playoff appearance to, to lift the trophy, all that sort of stuff. I'm sure it kind of goes through your mind as an Ohio state fan, but then under the surface, there is this angle of it, it is of him going on, on these trips and being the face uh, of a class. Right to be the guy that is pitching this program and selling the future of the program, and and him potentially talking to a Brandon Innes or Noah Rogers, and although they're already committed, to maybe maintain that relationship and keep them committed. I think that can't be understated either. The impact that a commitment that early in a next class could have on the future and and of the I guess the stability of of a recruiting class. You know, no doubt. Um... And also, you look at 2024 uh, in that stadium on Saturday night. Uh, Dylan will probably be sitting in the very near vicinity to them are wide receivers Jeremiah Smith out of Florida and Josiah Jojo Trotter out of Florida, uh, arguably the two of the top three wide receivers in the country in the 2024 class. So you you know you know he's going to be working hard on on trying to make sure that uh, Trotter and Jeremiah Smith become Buckeyes as well. Yeah, huge weekend for the Buckeyes. You're going to be able to catch all the coverage over at Bucknuts.com, the Ohio State side and 24-7 Sports Network. Bill, quickly, but before we go, I did want to ask you about the outlook for the rest of this class. We talked about the, the need for defensive linemen, for them to trip in some edge rushers early on in the season. What do you sense – needs to happen for Ohio State here in the next few months ahead of the early signing period? What are some areas of need still? Well, one thing the staff is working hard on doing is just making sure that the 20 commitments they have stay committed and sign with Ohio State. They do a really good job of recruiting kids all the way through the process, whether you committed months ago or, or you commit a week before signing day, they're going to recruit you all the way through the process. That's that's number one. Uh, number two, you know, finishing off the defensive line class. Uh, they've got a tackle committed and they've got an end committed. Um, the end, Jason Moore, also can play tackle. Uh, so they want two more in the class they would like. Uh, in a perfect world. If they could get two of those three, then fantastic, you know, like I said, grand slam. Uh, but in addition to the three defensive ends, they're, they're looking at a couple defensive tackles. One of them is going to make an official visit for the Wisconsin game, which is uh, a little bit later 
uh, in September, that being Caden McDonald from Georgia. He'll make an official visit then. And then Jordan Hall out of Florida is making an official visit at the end of the season for the Ohio State Michigan game in late November. So, you know, those are kind of the five guys uh, that would fill in the defensive line, so to speak. If they could get another running back, that would be great, but they don't have to. If they could get a tight end to add to the class, same thing. Uh, a great offensive tackle. But they really have filled their needs at all the other positions, and they're only going for kind of elite guys if they could get them, like uh, uh, Samson and Kunlo from uh, the East Coast. If they could somehow get him, they would certainly love to add him to the offensive line group. The Dean of Ohio State Football Recruiting, Bill Kerlick, as always, knocking it out of the park. You, you like that, Bill? I, I like I the brought it back to Brought it back to baseball. <laughs> you and I, my friend, we're on the same wavelength. You can follow Bill on Twitter at Bill underscore Kerlick. Remember all the latest on Ohio State Football Recruiting. Bill, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you, Blair, and uh, going to be a great weekend of football. I am super excited. Obviously, Ohio State, Notre Dame leading the charts there and, and grabbing a lot of headlines. A lot of recruits will be there. A lot of recruits will be everywhere in the country, and you can catch all the coverage over at 247sports.com. So for Bill Kerlick and our producer, Lance Glenn, I am Blair Angulo. Thank you so much for listening to this edition of the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel.